Our topic today is estrogen and progesterone production by thecal and granulosa cells. Female sex hormones are made by the ovaries. Looking inside the ovary, we see some developing follicles. Cells of the secondary follicle make estrogen and progesterone. Let's take a closer look at these cells. Zooming in on the secondary follicle, we see the thecal and granulosa cells. These cells work together to make estrogen and progesterone. LH and FSH are released from the pituitary gland and activate thecal and granulosa cells. The thecal cells express LH receptors, which when activated by LH, stimulate the thecal cell to increase absorption of LDL cholesterol from the blood. The cholesterol is then used by the thecal cells to synthesize steroids, like progesterone. Progesterone is then acted upon by enzymes to make androgens. Thecal cells do not have the enzyme aromatase, which makes it impossible for the thecal cells to produce estrogen on their own. The androgens must diffuse to the granulosa cells, where aromatase is present. The aromatase converts the androgens into estrogen inside the granulosa cells. Newly formed estrogen will then diffuse into the blood. Estrogen produced by the granulosa cells has a positive feedback on the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary, which brings about the LH surge. Granulosa cells have the ability to respond to LH stimulation, like the thecal cells, but LDL particles do not cross the basement membrane easily. So granulosa cells are unable to make progesterone before ovulation. After ovulation, the corpus luteum forms. In the corpus luteum, the same cells work together to produce progesterone and some estrogen. Ovulation involves the rupture of a mature follicle. When this happens, the basement membrane is breached and blood vessels gain direct access to granulosa cells. So the granulosa cells can now take in LDL cholesterol. The cholesterol is used by the granulosa cells to make progesterone. However, unlike the thecal cells, the granulosa cells lack the enzymes to convert progesterone into androgens. So most of the progesterone diffuses into the blood. This is why after ovulation, we see a rapid rise in progesterone. After ovulation, both the thecal and granulosa cells are making progesterone and to a lesser extent estrogen. Now for some questions. Pause the video and select your answers. If you answered the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.